teacher can't answer that question, when I, when I give them the assignment and they read it and they turn to me and say, who needs to know what I'm going to write? If I don't have a good answer for that question, I'm going to scrap that assignment and start again. Because there's way too much assignment giving in reading and writing courses where teachers are giving assignments and saying, show me what you know. I already know the answer. I, I, know, I know what you're going to write to me, but write it anyway. If, if there's no reason for them to write, they're not, going to write, they're not going to write. If there's no reason for them to read, they're not going to read. There's a wonderful anthropologist named Shirley Bryce Heath that says, every adult, except for those who are really cognitively disabled, can learn to read if there's a reason that that person is learning to read. So I take a look at assignments and say, I want to reshape assignments so that there's really a reason for students to read and write. Third, we think that faculty members might look for more ways to incorporate technology into their reading assignments. Many students, many studies, including our own, demonstrate that students engage most successfully in interactive electronic environments. Students are fluent in many ways that are largely untapped and ignored by instructors who cling to tradi traditional modes of instruction. Faculty members can enhance student learning through a better engagement with reading by incorporating assignments that achieve two primary goals. First, they provide students with opportunities to interact with hyperlinked texts. And second, they, got, they encourage students to reflect about their work in electronically public spheres. So we could think about something like using a Blackboard site, using a website, having a web log of some sort that students are working with. Finally, we would urge faculty members and administrators to conduct some kind of stu study similar to ours at your own institutions and to report your results to groups of students, instructors, administrators, and parents and discuss the implications of the results for teaching and learning on campus. There's no need to be apologetic about looking at students' reading abilities, habits, and practices. If we, can, if we intend to continue to base our assignments, our syllabi, and entire academic programs on student reading, then we, we need to study it and know more about it. Thank you. Do, do we have a minute for questions? I, 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 right. David. Yes. David, how did you select these? You said it's 21 <coughs> students yep. out of the 100? We, we put out a call for volunteers. And uh, we got about 100 volunteers, and we knew we wanted 20. So that, at that point, we, we didn't know any of these students at all. We simply went for gender and uh, ethnic distribution. So we put out a call to college composition <laughs> courses. Um, and we, we also, there is, there is an honors composition program. So we wanted to have uh, a commensurate percentage of students who were in the honors program as well.